welcome back. It's your favorite spoiler from Movie Drilling. For more updates, you can like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. There's a beautiful scene happening at sea. Lord Toranaga and his newfound English comrade John Blackthorne have escaped and are no longer in captivity. A great deal has been lost in the process. Lady Kiri no Kata Yuriko Deguchi, the wife of Toranaga, has completed her role in the deception that permitted her husband to escape and she is still in the grip of the despised Lord Ishido. Buntero Shinosuke Abe, the spouse of Lady Mariko, gives his life to stop the opposing forces from stopping the escape. Or at least he seems to. It's probably best to think of this guy as still being in play until we witness a dead body. Regarding Mariko, Toranaga, and Blackthorn, many people sacrificed everything for their protection. The surviving have a lot to be thankful for. In what way does Lord Toranaga decide to commemorate? John Blackthorn, the barbarian engine, taught him to dive. Blackthorn grants the strange request. He's getting better at understanding when to defy Japanese conventions as well as getting better at adapting to them. After all, it was a dramatic outburst on the morality of examining women's rooms in the context of European chivalric values that allowed Toranaga to slip out of Ishido's grasp while donning his wife's clothing. Blackthorn receives the honorific Hatamoto from Toranaga, signifying his high status and his valor in facilitating Toranaga's escape. John Blackthorn will see to it that this lord, who has clearly taken a shine to him, learns to dive. The actors Cosmo Jarvis and Hiroyuki Sonata jump off the ship in their skivvies and race each other to shore as the program comes to a close. In a series that is fueled by physical danger and paranoia, it's a pleasant moment of relaxation and recreation. It's content like this that elevates a show and makes it worthwhile. I wish the remainder of the program could be described in the same way. This episode falls short as an action movie even though it has all the makings of a true suspense story. A disguised escape, a woodland firefight, a valiant last stand, and a race at sea. The late filmmaker Charlotte Brandstrom, who helmed the dull fantasy series The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, documents a number of noteworthy events. In a woodland by night, Ishido, Toranaga, and the Christian forces engage in a three-way conflict. On the dock, Buntero bravely resists dozens of bullies. Blackthorn maneuvers his ship into and out of danger while racing against his foul-mouthed Catholic rival Rodriguez. On paper, these situations all seem like the stuff of fantastic action movies. Regretfully, while essential to action filmmaking, aiming a camera at motion is not the primary requirement for success. Too much of the superficial thrill is captured in medium-wide shots that don't fully convey the terrain or fully immerse viewers in the physicality of combat. The surprise attack in the forest, the attempt to ground us in the experiences of the besieged, and the combat choreography which depicts the danger of facing two opposing armies simultaneously and features performances by Blackthorn, Mariko, and Toranaga all lack genuine surprise. The arrows don't feel as fast as they do in, say, the battle scenes from Peter Jackson's The Lord of the Rings movies. The pandemonium of that nocturnal combat doesn't affect you. You don't sense Buntero's combination of fearsome talent and desperation as he repels attackers from a dock full of them. You don't sense the danger of the game of chicken that Rodriguez and Blackthorn are playing when the two men in the center of your vision are holding the rudder. You don't experience many emotions. Here, the lighting continues to be an issue. Like action taking place in a digital no-man's land, the show feels unreal rather than surreal due to the blue-gray evening images and the blinding haze of the afternoon at sea. It's unfortunate because there is a lot of curiosity in the plot. For example, Lord Toranaga's strategy against his opponents on the Council of Regents is predicated on the kind of procedural counting blunder that routinely undoes speakers of the House in the present. This is because they can only impeach and execute him if he is present to cast the fifth and final vote. Witnessing baddies be outwitted is always entertaining. There should also be conversation on Blackthorn's growing bonds with Mariko and Toranaga. When Blackthorn describes the Japanese belief that sex workers are essential to sustaining mental and physical health, there's a nice, subdued, erotic interchange. Her euphemism for climax, 
the moment of the clouds and the rain, obviously leaves an impression on Blackthorn, who may even accept her invitation. This returns us to the site of the diving. Lord Toranaga was prepared to sacrifice Blackthorn in order to rescue himself just hours before appointing him as his swimming instructor. With Ishido, the Portuguese, and the Christian lords vying for his blood, he fully planned to leave the engine behind. It is not any noblesse oblige on the part of Toranaga, but rather Blackthorn's inventiveness and skill as a pilot that save him. It seems as though the diving ritual is a purgative, a means for these two guys to discard their misgivings about one another along with their clothes. Thank you once again. At Movie Drilling, we provide you with everything you need to know. For more, like, comment, and subscribe to our channel.